This is Ryan from the band Lame Ass Dads. We are a pop punk band from Northwest Ohio who make music that we love but our kids hate. We released a full length album last fall that you can stream everywhere called Greetings from Nowhere Ohio. All social media platforms just search at Lame Ass Dads. We just released an acoustic version of our song, Days Pass By, which is available anywhere you stream your music. Head over to lameassdads.com to get connected. All right, guys, guess what? By the time you're listening to this, I am probably on my way driving to Pat right freaking now because we are on our way to So What Fest in Texas. And speaking of So What Fest, we were able to get our good friend Mike Zemer, not only the, the guy who runs third, uh, third String Productions, but the guy who started all of it. He mm -hmm. did all of it. If you've heard of So What Fest, he did it. If you heard of Unsilent Night Fest, he did it. Furnace Fest coming up, <laughs> you guessed it, he did it. This guy is yeah, he's literally part, he's part everywhere of all of it. with this. And uh, we uh, are we're, we're blessed with his presence. We're blessed with him coming on the podcast. And uh, if I don't care what you're doing right now, right? If you live near or around or are willing to just travel, stop right now. Go look online. There are tickets left. Come out to So What. Not only see some good bands, check out me and Pat. We're going to be there in person. We're going to be if there. If you've ever wanted to meet us, which I don't think anybody really does. Who gives a oh, shit Oh, come it? on. <laughs> Such a character. You, you know, yeah. we're two hot single, single emo, emo dads, dads in your area. Your area. <laughs> and, we'll, and if you're in Dallas, if you're in the Texas, Arlington, Arlington, Texas area, mm -hmm. we will mm -hmm. be in your area. I'm but with that, dude. Let's get into it. Let's learn more about uh, what Mike does and about So What Fest. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Where Did All My Friends Go, a podcast about life in the music industry. And today, again, we have a really special guest, Pat. Like, this guy has uh, started a lot of things, like, and yeah. something that you and I are actually going to be a part of. Uh, but well, actually, by the time this episode comes out, we've already yeah, it comes. Out, yeah, no, it won't. It comes oh. out the the Wait. week of the week so of. Fast. Yeah. So yeah. by the time I'm saying this right now, there's a good chance I'm on the road driving to Texas. There you yep. go. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, we, are. we got Mike Zimmer on the show. Uh, any of you that don't know, Mike is a marketing and music entrepreneur. Been a part of some of the best, biggest music festivals in our scene. From so what to Furnace Fest on Silent Night. Mike, thanks for being on the show, man. Yeah, absolutely. This is cool. Well, you uh, started Third String Productions in 2004. Uh, and Third String Productions, like we said before, you guys have done uh, Unsilent Night, uh, So What Fest, uh, and uh, what was that? What was that? Uh, four Chord? Is that Four? Is that no. Four Furnace Fest. Yeah, that four Furnace. Furnace. Furnace Fest. Furnace. Furnace. It's the F's for me. <laughs> yeah, where's it? Too many F's for you. Uh, so, like, that seems like a really big endeavor. So... How did you even want to get started doing that kind of shit? Um, I, I mean, like festivals kind of started on an accident. Like we were doing That's all shows. good things do. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to we're m, &M. Doing, <laughs> We're doing shows at this uh, community center in Plano and they had a lot of rooms. And so like my goal was I started in the small room and I wanted to go to the bigger room and then they had a bigger, bigger room. And then you could do like the whole venue. And the only way to do that to fill the space was to keep adding stages. And so um, my second show ever was actually two stages. And then the one after that became three or four stages. And it wasn't really necessarily under the idea of creating a festival. It was really just like, how can we get the most people out here? Well, we need more stages. We need more bands. Like every local band promotes, sells tickets. Like it's easy. So uh, we started doing that. And then like the one year anniversary came around, the two year anniversary, the three year anniversary. And our, fest or our, yeah, our festival was always in March. So it was right around South by Southwest. And so, mm -hmm. um, one of the graphic designers that I was working with was like, man, we should just call this festival South by so what, because everybody's coming here instead. And it's like, 
yeah, let's try that. And so <laughs> um, we did that. And that was, that was the couple months after we had started on silent night. And so we were like getting into this, like, Hey, we should probably brand these things as something other than just like, it's a festival or it's an event um, sure. or our two, three, four year anniversary, whatever it was. So um, yeah, we just started doing that. And then like the name caught on really well. And a lot of bands would go to South by Southwest just so that they could come play our festival. Um, and they would get paid at our festival instead of paying to be at South by Southwest. So like they kind of helped each other, like they would come to town because of South by Southwest, but they'd be able to afford it because of our festival. Um, and I just, I kept doing that. And then along the way, like all the other things that you were talking about in the beginning, like marketing label, um, just management, like all of it just kind of came naturally as like, you get really involved in one thing and you start falling in love with the artist that plays all your shows and they need money and like things kind of just, you know, organically happen that way. But, um, definitely like my passion has always been putting on events and, and trying to do something a little bit different than, what's being done which you know started out as how many local bands can we support and how many stages can we put on and now it's kind of like the same idea but like also how do we also put two chains at the top of the lineup like how do <laughs> how do we make it just absolutely crazy one of the things that i've like i really love about the festivals that you do compared to a lot of other ones that i've seen is that you actually put local support on these um and you know it's and it's not just always big names you have like you know smaller local bands going on these shows yeah i mean it's it's something important for the music scene it's something important for continuing to to build artists into what could become headliners and it's also important because you get all these people in bands that can go and promote to a whole new group of people that may not know about your event, even though it's been going on in the city for years. Like they could have moved here. They could just not be connected. They might be a coworker or whatever it is. And, you know, when they're selling discounted tickets that are cheaper by far than anything you can get online and they're getting paid to do so, they're highly motivated to promote the event for you. And it, it increases ticket sales. It makes the event better. It gives them a crowd and, um, a lot of the time we've seen artists go from like opening the local stage to now being on the main stage, like a Polyphia, Crown the Empire. Um, I know I know there's more uh, <laughs> on our festival, but those are the two that always come to mind. And they actually, they, I know the Polyphia guys don't like the fact that I always bring it up, but I'm like, <laughs> it's your work ethic. Like you guys right. were in high school selling a million tickets and you weren't selling a million tickets because your music was bad. You were selling a million tickets because your music was good and people wanted to come see you. And it wasn't that hard to like convince all these people to come. Yeah. Um, your, your cat is tripping me out right now because out of the corner of my eye, my dog <laughs> is pacing around the office and then I see your cat and I'm like, is my dog going to get your cat? But like, we're not even in the same room. So that's not possible. <laughs> or is it? Is it? His, yeah. His cat's always just back there doing something. Just do whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've Hopefully you each have like very themed rooms. Like yours is very red. Yours is very yellow. <laughs> Mine's just a conference room that like happens to have one of our cutout ma mascots in it. Yeah, but it's a, it's such a rad cutout mascot. Dude, all my toys he's just making are... sure that I say the right thing. Like, if I say the wrong thing, he's going to get me. He's going to mess you so, up. So Pat has a bunch <laughs> of stuff in his background, which is fucking cool, and I wish it was in mine. But all my toys are in, like, the other room. I have a whole ass shelf of just, like, Star Wars Legos. Like, I'm not talking, like, shelf shelf. I'm talking bookshelf and then a few different language shelf. I have, like, my all my pop bottles and everything is over here so i can look at it i never think about like what's behind me i'm like ah look at myself <laughs> and then nobody yeah. can see what i'm looking at <laughs> yeah I that's, how my, that's how my desks always were too and like then i started doing video calls I'm like man i need something cool behind me and like i don't so i just this stays <laughs> yeah. here and i this is my corner <laughs> yeah i've just yeah. been you know trying to fill that up with uh you know my cases of toys <laughs> so just in case anybody didn't know uh I mean, by the time this podcast comes out, it's going to be literally a couple of days. So, so what fest uh, of 2022 is May 27th through the 29th. And this is the biggest one to date, right? So tell us a little bit about what to expect from uh, so what fest. I think it's weird. Cause like, I don't even know what to expect. Um, we, Oh, cool. Thanks. Next question. <laughs> we, started, <laughs> we started putting hip hop artists on the festival years ago. Like we booked G easy before he was big. We booked yeah. riffraff 
because it was funny. Um, yeah. <laughs> we, we booked Ghostman, Puya, Fat Nick, a bunch of those like uh, 2017. And we just started realizing like that there's so much crossover. Um, the energy is the same for the crowds. And so this year, like the first thing that we went after was like, okay, well, we're going to do some hip hop. Let's get Waka Flocka. Like he did Warp Tour, people like him. And then Travi sure. McCoy. And then we went after Tyga because he was kind of tied into that, who has since been replaced by Juicy J on our lineup. Um, but like once the lineup started coming together and people started hearing about it, like on the agency side and the artist side, it kind of became a like, how do we get this artist on here? And like all the way up to Ray Strummer, Two Chains, and like Trippy Red, like these crazy artists we never thought would be interested. And it's just there's so much collaboration and like love for other genres that started mostly during COVID and like from the, the need to create where like these rappers want to be rock stars and these rock stars want to work with rappers yeah. and like right. it just it, it works and it's crazy because I remember once we announced two chains and race drummer we had agents hitting us up and they're like do you have room for Wiz Khalifa Lil Wayne's interested in your festival and it's like we don't have yeah. that budget this year we've already booked <laughs> our rappers but let's keep this energy going into next year and maybe we can uh maybe we can get Wayne out like <laughs> that's yeah. insane yeah I mean it's 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 awesome like the concept of basically like you know a festival with three genres in it and like but it it this scene is so awesome in that way yeah. that you can do something like that and everyone's going to be stoked well, about dude, it. Think about it back, like back in the day, right? Like there was all of this, um, especially when it comes to like hip hop and rap, there was like this uh, um, uh, wall, right? Like there was this barrier between like, you know, you either really liked this, you know, music or, or uh, you were outside and you were never allowed like in, you know what I mean? And, and that like is true for a lot of different fucking genres and gatekeeping is still a huge thing today. But, like, I don't know what timeline it was, but, like, once you started noticing that people, like, share the same music tastes, it's no longer a guilty pleasure. You just enjoy what you enjoy. Those barriers come down. Like, oh, I like hip-hop. I like rock. Oh, we can't, like, we can't be together. Like, we're, like, fighting. It's like, nah, dude. Like, once those barriers started coming down, people were opening up a lot more and like you realize that the energy is very, very similar at these shows. And it's just something fucking beautiful. It's like, yeah, I'm going to see this hip hop show. Cool. I'm going to see this fucking metal band right now. You want to meet up for a hot dog at the like stand after they're done with their set? Like, you know what I mean? Like there's this, there's this uh, element of community that uh, when those walls came down, this community just started getting pushed forward. And I think a lot of people miss that. And uh, I, that's what I love about So What Fest is it's giving that opportunity to put the community right back where it belongs. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, yeah. and I think the barrier that got knocked down was Spotify wrapped. Like mm. once, you, mm -hmm. once you wanted to show off what you were listening to and you couldn't really hide it, and then you realize everyone's just like you, yeah. it was like, oh, so we can like yeah. go to these festivals and concerts together because i mean we're not the first people to ever do it i mean coachella mm -hmm. has like the edm tent the hip-hop tent they have the main right. stage like mm -hmm. all that but like i think we're the first people to really take this chance in more of like the underground like we're not sure. mm -hmm. we don't have like this year's hottest mainstream rapper this year's hottest pop act and this year's hottest like rock act it's not like imagine dragons fallout boy and like lil wayne or like so you know something yeah. like that like yeah, it's yeah. it's more of like one of the artists that i keep hearing the most about is ken carson like he's supposed to be the next like playboy cardi and he's one of the top like people that everyone's excited for and like um lancy fox and like some of these smaller names are like things that you're starting to notice on other bills now like mm -hmm. we've been promoting this for a long time and now i'm starting to see oh they are popping up on other festivals and it's not just like rolling loud they're on like Lollapalooza and mm -hmm. austin city limits and things like that and like it's really cool to know that we're especially for me being 36 years old like being plugged in still to what 
is relevant, but also being mindful that a lot of people have been going to this festival since it started. And so you need your two chains, your Waka Flocka, your mm -hmm. Ghost Inside, your Under Oath, your Devil Wears Prada. Like you need those acts that are admittedly having a huge resurgence right now, but are still oh, yeah. like your, your legacy acts mixed with what's hot yeah. and popular. Yeah, like what's we, we looked at, um, we made a, a set time scheduler and we looked at like who people are most excited to see. And it like blew my mind because I was thinking like, you know, Black Bear is going to be number one and then like uh, Trippy Red or whatever. But it's, it's some 41, Simple oh, yeah. Plan and 303. And then it like so, goes down from there. And I was just like, okay, so we booked the right headliners. This is good. And I also oh, yeah. feel like the, the rap crowd is very just like, I'm going to look at the schedule and then I'm going to leave the website. Like they're not, they're not the warp tour kids that are used to like opening up Excel sheets and like doing We're all of this. it down, circling our stuff. <laughs> I felt so <laughs> bad because we posted the, um, the set times sheets first on, on social media and people didn't notice that there was a schedule on a website. So like in mm -hmm. our discord, people were like, I just made this whole Excel sheet, blah, blah, blah. And like shared it. And then someone would be like, they have a scheduler for that. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does it for you. <laughs> yeah. I Man, think like awful. when, when I first saw like the lineup, the, the ones that really stood out to me, like just as my person, me personally was some 41, you know, simple plan ghost inside, like lights out. Can't wait. <laughs> like, <laughs> like so stoked for that. I, I have been following them, like, I mean, like everybody has, right? Since since everything happened, and like, I you know, I wanted to get tickets to that uh, reunion show or that comeback show, and, mm -hmm. and yet that was literally impossible, like all five times. <laughs> and like right. the fact that like, that, like that they're gonna be at so what? Like, I'm not even gonna be working for that 30, 40 minutes. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm going to watch the ghost inside because those right. boys. Uh, they fucking deserve everything. They yeah. deserve Hard working guys. Everything that mm, it, <laughs> mm, mm, mm. so stoked on that. I'm so excited. On, so <laughs> with going with Ghost Inside and in, in that you know harder genre. Mm -hmm. So you got Furnace Fest coming up in the next few months as well. So what are some of the biggest struggles you face when setting up shows of this magnitude? Um. I mean, each festival is a different challenge. So like on Silent Night and So What are 100% third string festivals. It's me in Orlando. We have a team of people under us and we kind of make all those decisions. Furnace Fest is its own beast because it's four of us, equal partners. And mm -hmm. we pretty much like vote and decide on everything. Like from who we approve as sponsors to who we want to add to the last slot of a lineup. Um, we each usually get like one or two acts that are like friends or we're fans of on a smaller level that we want to add. Um, so it's just a different dynamic. And I think rather than it being challenging, it's actually a learning experience mm -hmm. to go to a model like that where there's four people, everybody has equal input. We hear each other out, we present ideas. And sometimes you don't get your way. Like that's something that I'm not used to as the owner of a business where like my team will tell me my ideas are dumb and I'll still do them and I'll, I'll be wrong and <laughs> we'll, we'll lose money on something. But like, there's, there's no one, there's no one at Furnace Fest that can make like an executive decision without the majority. And sure. it's a really cool a dynamic to be able to have checks and balances of that sort and like Absolutely. where i might get really excited and be like let's add this artist i don't care how much it costs like they're gonna be like okay calm down <laughs> like <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna send this and then sometimes like we get artists cheaper than i thought we would and i'm like wow i'm really glad that we all agreed to do it that way um but i mean it's the the challenge is like never having a break so we had all of 2020 off with that with the exception of the first couple months Right. And then the majority of 2021, our first event in 2021 was June. So we went a year and like two or three months without events. And then mm -hmm. we're back in it. And all of a sudden it was like on silent night. And then we're almost at, so what? And then we're going to be at furnace fest and then on silent night again, like it right. just kind of, it's a never ending cycle of like time flying by because you're constantly looking forward to the next thing that's getting there faster and faster. Mm -hmm. Um, 
so trying to trying to um, stay focused currently on so what while also having my weekly furnace fest meetings and last week I was in Alabama like it's very challenging but um, I have a great team of people here in my office that help with everything and when I'm like hey I'm going to be gone for a couple of days I know that the building's not going to burn down and that things will get handled and at worst they'll just say like hey Mike's out of town he'll get back to you in two days like <laughs> it is what it is nothing's that urgent you know um, but it, it's and they're all different ideas too. Like, so what isn't the same kind of lineup as Furnace Fest and not the same lineup as on Silent Night. So right. um, you get the agents that don't really understand that and they want their artists on all three. And you're like, that doesn't make sense. Uh, there's very <laughs> few artists that could like fit on all three of those bills that make sense. But um, yeah, that's, it's, it's fun. It's chaos and it's, yeah. it's never ending. So you've talked <laughs> to us a little bit about like where, where third string productions started. You've talked to us a little bit about, um, you know, working with management agencies, all these sort of uh, variables that all of a sudden just keep pouring in from different spaces. And, uh, and now you're presented with a, a whole new set of problems or um, uh, equations that, that need solving. So w with that mindset, like, what were some of the biggest hurdles that you have had to overcome when starting out with not only third string productions, but furnace fests on silent night and, uh, and so what fest? I think the biggest challenge has been coming back to what is familiar, but isn't the same. So labor is more expensive. Staging is more expensive. Mm -hmm. Everybody's getting paid more. So like budgets that you used to have that you went off of, are now not what they used to be. And so you're like, okay, hold on. We thought our talent budget was gonna be this. Now we need to back down a little bit because the production's gonna be more expensive right. in this hospitality company. And like, that's just kind of the way that things are right now with like inflation, gas prices and all the mm. buzzwords that you hear on TV all the time. Absolutely. But they really are yeah. like even, even supply chain sort shortages. Like we haven't been able to get certain merch items that we thought we were gonna be able to get. Yeah. And it just, it's, it's just a very challenging world to work through. And it's, it can be very difficult to be a promoter right now, but like, it's crazy because so many of our club shows just sell out. So it's like, everybody's so hungry and ready to go to shows, but like, you have to have this delicate balance of like, everything's getting more expensive, but everyone just struggled for a year. I mean, obviously there's people out there that like, their job never changed. They kept making money. Life was normal, but right. for the majority of Americans, that wasn't the case. So like, you want to have this ticket that's like, okay, well, based on the expenses and the lineup I have, like, I think people should pay $400 to come to this festival, which is $125 a day, which doesn't seem like a lot of money, but then you're like, we'll keep it low key. We'll start here. And you, your lowest starting point, people are like, oh, your festival used to be $99. And it's like, well, yeah, and Arizona iced tea actually used to be 99 cents and now it's a dollar 14. So there's your sign of inflation. <laughs> what is it? Cause I, I it's still enough, 99 cents where I'm at. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, those, those, two makes $3, me mad. <laughs> those two for $3 waters I was buying every day during yeah. COVID to go work out are now two, two for $5. $5. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Oh okay, yeah. But like, it's, we, it's, it's a, you know, it's challenging everywhere right now with with yeah, all that stuff everything so. i mean i paid 414 a gallon for gas just yesterday I was like, we're oh, finally yeah we're we're at 419 and i've never seen it over four dollars in texas like yeah, we had the cheapest awful. gas in the country for a while yeah okay but let's get back to it like so you talked to us a little bit about like your macro goals and or sorry not uh yeah your macro goals with also like the hurdles that it came along with like you know all your festivals that you're doing now right? Like and where that growth has come to now, but let's reel it back in. Let's take it a bit farther back. Let's talk about those micro goals back when you were first starting third string. What made third string even become like a reality? Not just like the fact that you were throwing festivals or concerts in, in your community center, third string specifically, what made that a reality and what hurdles did you have to overcome to make it happen? I mean, the company just like, it just started organically. Like I was helping local bands and they needed things done and I started doing them. And then putting on a show was one of those things, becoming a record label was one of those things, managing and like 
I kind of just like one thing led to another and I never got another job. Like somehow from the first show that I ever did, there was a little bit of money left over and I was like, okay, cool. This is mine now. And then like, <laughs> yes. you, know, you do it again and you're like, oh, this is mine now. And it's a little bit more like <laughs> it just, it just kind of like happened. And like, there was never, there was never any intention when I threw my first show for it to become a career. And there was never anything other than like a person that loved music finding a way to help his friends that made music and then one day like probably three four years in it might have been the first or the second so what at Plano Center which was the last one at Plano Center that like I kind of looked around and I was like oh shit like this is real like this room <laughs> is full there's like seven different pits throughout the room for a day to remember like Enter Shikari broke the barricade like there's too many people here like this building is gonna break <laughs> like it was just <laughs> It was like this, this beautiful chaos moment of like, okay, I like, this is something that I do like, and, and I keep looking back on that every time, like this year at Furnace Fest, it's kind of like, I ask myself, how did I even get here? Like, how am I holding a radio? Like being the guy that is, is in charge of this event, like, or one of the guys that's in charge of this event, like, how did I get familiar with staging and sound and hiring security and where to get porta potties? Like, it's just kind of like, things that you learn along the way because you have to like I was never I was never mm -hmm. like I'm gonna do this and here's where I want to take it it was just like how can I keep doing this and not have to get another job yeah. like I love doing this and I want to keep doing this even if it's stressful even if it's like literally an entire career that is like gambling um yeah. Yeah. Like you literally as a promoter you just bet on bands it's like it's May and I'm, I'm buying a tour for December. So how big do I think this artist is going to be in December? Okay. Here's my offer. Right. Let's see what happens. Um, and then of course, everything, everything is put on you for, for marketing and making the show do what it does. Even if the, the artist has an album that flops and people stop caring or, you mm -hmm. know, whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's just, I, I don't know. I think it was just all organic. Like it, yeah. it wasn't ever supposed to be or meant to be or anything that I was looking to be I had plans to go to college and be an architect and it's I think it's kind of ironic because like I'm I'm building something different I'm not putting together mm. like an actual you know building but on festivals when those CAD drawings come out and like I used to do AutoCAD I'm like man I could literally like do all this myself if I wanted <laughs> to like yeah I could go in and like put where the stages need to be and like all that kind of stuff um but That's yeah, a great I mean, skill set to have, it though. It really is. <laughs> yeah. Well, so oh, I was going to say, so before we go to our, our break here, I was going to see if you could give our listeners a piece of advice that you know now uh, that you wish you knew when you were first starting out. Just because you fail at something once does not mean you're going to continue failing at it. Mm, that's good. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yes. All so, right. You want to take it? You want take, to take it? Take us a break there, Bear. Right. Take us well, a break. With that, we're going to go to a quick break and we'll be right back. Did you guys know that we have a playlist on Spotify for up and coming new bands? Well, we do. It's called the Unsigned Pop Punk Playlist. We update it bi weekly for up and coming bands. There's 45 new tracks on there every other week. Go give it a follow on Spotify. Save it. Share it. We want to help you discover your favorite new band and also discover new bands in your area that you can go out and see for as little as five dollars for a show so give the playlist to follow on spotify at unsigned pop punk it's as easy as that and we're back with mike zemer mike one more time thank you so much for being on this podcast like this is awesome pat and i cannot wait to be at uh, so what fest in Texas, I can't wait to eat what a burger again. I'm pretty, I'm pretty <laughs> stoked about that. Uh, it's been a long time since I've been uh, been in Texas, uh, but I'm stoked. I'm stoked that uh, that you're doing what you're doing. Like, I don't know if you get that. You probably get that too much, but it's like <laughs> I love that you're doing what you're doing. We don't have that up here. We don't have that. That I'm aware. Yeah, there's of not yet. a lot of stuff the like that up in we had up in the similar Midwest. Was Warped Tour. That was it, mm -hmm. and then that went away, and nobody likes to really hit here. Like it's like festivals, <laughs> it, it just it doesn't happen. Like you it's might get cold. your bigger bands, like one-off tours or whatever. You know that might happen in Chicago or Minneapolis, but we're still far away from Chicago and Minneapolis, so it's it's tough. 
So the fact that you're doing something so um, intentional and, cr- and helping to foster that scene by even allowing like uh, local support, which let's be honest, not a lot of festivals no. are doing that. Anymore. That's massive. It, I think it, it's awesome. It, it's huge. I like it so much hope to anybody who is in that area that is like, I think I could play a festival. Well, there's, a, there's one that there's a possibility where you can, instead of just having, you know, all the big acts, because let's be honest, you know, the big acts are easier, you know, like it's, uh, you don't have to worry about like people selling tickets that, you know, you don't have to worry about, uh, um, having to deal with, I don't want to say amateurs, but like you, when you have a professional touring, uh, rig come through, everybody knows what they're doing. And, yeah. you know, through, and then you get like a, you, you throw on a, a local and it's not that they've never had that taste. Mm-hmm. So it's like, there's going to be that, uh, jaggedness there's going to be those hiccups when it comes to that but that is a is a challenge that you're willing to accept and i freaking love that because by giving them that opportunity now they know what to do better or what not to do and it's like just setting them up for success in the future and like as unsigned pop punk we fucking love that so dude (laughs) thank you Uh, that's what we do it's really cool to see the posts that happen when bands announce that they're on the festival and you see like I started going to this festival when I was 14 and yeah. my favorite, I saw all my favorite bands and like old pictures of them with swoopy hair looking like a scene kid. And then they're yeah. like, it's been my goal ever since starting a band to play this festival. And I'm like, man, these bands don't even tell you that when you book them, it's like something that they share later on. Like no one's using that as a selling point. They're just like, Hey, here's our music. We'd love to work really hard to promote this festival. Let us know if we can play. And then like, you see stuff like that. And like, it never gets old. Like I've been doing this, since I was 18, so literally half my life. And like, it never gets old seeing an artist that's like, this was a goal of mine. It's like, okay, well, they yeah. they now know they can reach that. So like, what's their next goal? That they next want? Are they gonna get signed to a label? Are they gonna tour? Are they gonna play, you know, the Warp Tour resurgence in five years? Or like, yeah. what, what else do they have that, you know, they really want to accomplish and now they believe they can do? It's, it's yeah. super cool. And now Mike, you've been a part of that uh, life moment for them. And I think that's fucking fantastic. But we're going to move on to our next segment. This has nothing to do with anybody's career. This has nothing to do with what we've been talking about. This is literally for fun. This is ear candy for the listeners or for you YouTube viewers out there. This is eye candy for you. With Ooh, that, that like- <laughs> dude, I haven't practiced. I went on a date. Anyway, uh, this segment is called Obscure Question Segment. Are you ready? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> it's not that it's, it's not, not that, that wild but it's never that wild have you well, heard the whole eye candy thing so i was like i don't know where we're going with this well to, i mean like, to be fair will you be <laughs> my be boyfriend is where we're at now <laughs> right? let's let's go uh, my, my we're going steady no to that okay have you heard the theory that earth's center is actually made of water i have not it's actually quite incredible like <laughs> Well, idea, tell us about it. Yeah, so the idea that, that instead of molten lava, whatever, uh, uh, molten rock, it's made of water, which is because the theory states uh, most everything, every biological life is made up of like it, between 70 to 90% water. Um, and then the, the scientists have been trying to prove whether or not the moon actually has enough gravitational pull to, uh, to cause that much effect on uh the oceans rather it's actually the water inside the planet uh that is like uh like moving it back and forth so i mean i i am not an expert on this but i'm like that there's some might be something to there because i mean we can't actually prove it i don't think i don't think we can prove what's in the center of the earth you um, went so, you went so intensely uh scientific there though that you like fucked with your camera oh like, dude no it fucked up as soon as you said let's go on a date it's like your like, your yeah. your magnetism just like, <laughs> I broke I broke my camera's brain, but like think about it though like would that kind of make sense like the way like you know lunar sure. like tides and everything like affects us or like you know how uh you know the t- the tides rise and fall as like high and far as they do I think that and I think there might be something to that. Thanks for that. Thanks for that science lesson. This is this is one of my favorite things that Bear will do when we, he's coming up with obscure questions. Is he has been watching YouTube or watching TV 
and doesn't actually make a question you know he's just like he makes this fucking question that like kind of goes to it's like a yes or no and then he's like okay well let me tell you about it now it's like okay well that's i'm ready no but i want to know what you think about it i want to (laughs) know if like you think that there's actually grounds to there and then i want you to try to explore that i think i think we should explore it and we should find a way to go to the center of the earth then we know like a so like a could, team. Go, did we just build? Did we just make a team? I'll call Brendan you can Fraser. Go from from Duluth, Minnesota, to the center of the earth, then anyone can do anything. Oh, I mean, then hey. your local band can play so what fest. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So, next question. So, Mike, what what do you think life would be like if television was never invented? Boring. I watch so much TV. <laughs> it's embarrassing how much TV I watch. What's it like? What's your what's your thing you're watching right now? Um, I have been re-watching Seinfeld for the 20th time. Okay. Um, on That's top of happens. that, I just finished all the seasons of the shows I watched. So I got really into um power, and then okay. power ended and they started ghost, and then ghost ended for that season and they have another one and there's like four offshoots in the power universe so i've watched all of those i watch a lot of mafia like mob drug dealer shit mm, yeah, so yeah. anything from breaking bad to godfather of harlem what about to, peaky blinders yes i do like that one um why because we can <laughs> and then uh i have times where i get into mad men um i just I mean, I literally just, my TV is always on. <laughs> right now, I'm watching the Mavs win the playoffs. So, uh, basketball is where I'm at. But, but uh, I feel that I'm, you know, af- after this, I'm going to put on, you know, the, the Minnesota Wild game and watch, you know, the Wild take, <laughs> take that. All right. Last question. In your opinion, what is the most ridiculous thing you have to pay tax, like pay in taxes? I mean, I, I think homeowner tax is ridiculous because I drive on the roads in my neighborhood and I see the schools in my neighborhood and I, everything is just horrible. (laughs) I complain about this. I complain about this every time I hit a pothole, leaving my house to the office. I'm like, why did I pay my property taxes? (laughs) Right. Oh my God. My, I have, I have to pay my half coming up here and I'm not an idiot. And I decided that I want to just pay mine once a year. So like January comes around and I'm like, Oh yeah crap <laughs> yeah oh, well man. i guess i'm not eating for a while <laughs> no, no shit great way to start the year all yeah. right man well that brings us into our very last segment and with that i'm gonna let pat take it away all right this is rapid fire questions you're gonna speak from the heart shoot from the hip yeah you know, whatever pops in your head first that's your answer you okay. ready for that <laughs> <laughs> he's like not at all all right coke or pepsi Pepsi. Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars. Nice. Mario or Luigi? Mario. Okay. This one, I, I, I have faith that you've got this one. Can you sing us the jingle for Bagel Bites? No. <laughs> no? Do you, do you remember what Bagel Bites are? <laughs> yeah, but I couldn't sing the jingle. <laughs> Fair enough. So right, Pat, take it it's, away. it's like 50 50, but every time Bear says, pizza! if you don't know it, I got to sing it. So, pizza in the morning, pizza in the evening, pizza at supper time. If pizza's on a bagel, you can eat pizza anytime. Pizza bagel bites. Amazing. Should I, should I sing that at So What? I think you should convince them to bring that back. Should and we do a pop punk version of that? Bro. <laughs> Holy stuff. <laughs> holy Bro. shit if you do That's that it. then you have to do an entire compilation of yep of like jingles that are now pop punk. Punk. yeah mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. all right i'm That's in our next tiktok uh, uh done <laughs> right. new Good. album coming soon uh yeah. gwen stefani or Haley williams gwen stefani hard shell or soft shell tacos hard shell oh now <laughs> la- oh, this is the last one and you don't gotta, you don't gotta go easy on them because they're on, they're on the show. Some forty-one, or yellow card. Some forty-one. Right there, you go. Mm-hmm. 
That's well, you it. did it, man. You made it through the podcast. Congratulations. Yellow, yellow card. Yellow card kicked out the two members that I that I think made them yellow card. So that always was an easy easy question. <laughs> sure, That's and that fair. makes sense. So one of the things we we always switch up our rapid fire. Like after a while, we like to compile a list, but we always like to pit two bands that are um, moderately similar to kind of make it difficult. And one of the things is like both bands are all both bands are great. I yeah. I love both both bands it's just personal opinions and preferences Mm -hmm. but i'm like i love that some 41 always does you know just incorporates like not even metal but like thrash metal and i fucking love that so much (laughs) we we kept them mentioned on all of our ads for rock for like the rock metal because we know that there's a lot of crossover there and they do play a lot of like heavier festivals yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. all right dude well, like I said just a second ago, before uh, before uh, before uh, before we started talking, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you made it through the podcast. Congratulations, oh, yeah. you did it. We were so thankful that you've been here, dude. Like, w- w- I know Pat and I can't wait to be at uh, So What Fest. This is going to be mm-hmm. incredible. This is, this is new for me. I've never been to So What Fest, so I am I'm stoked. But with that, we're going to give you the floor, all right? Plug your brand, plug your promotion, anything that you have going on, obviously, with the festivals, with your, uh, with your company. The floor is yours. Take it away. Yeah, uh, I would say, uh, depending on when you see this, you should hop in the car right now, head to Texas, and come to So What Music Festival. Absolutely. If you are in a local band, or for the sake of this, if you are in a national band, and you want a discount code, you can DM me, Mike Zemer, and I will give that to you. And then I will give you the link to submit your band for 2023 because everybody felt like they were behind this year and somehow missed when I posted that last June. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, follow me, Mike Zemer, on all social media. Follow So What Music Fest. Um, come to the festival, have a good time, then play it next year. <laughs> Dude, that's oh, yeah. amazing. And with that, Guys, this has been another episode of Where Did All My Friends Go, a podcast about life in the music industry. And uh, Pat and I, are, we're about uh, to, get, to get going here. We got to get on the road to So What Fest, and we hope to see you there. See you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe. Thank you to those who already are. Check us out on Spotify, Apple Music, or anywhere else you stream your podcast. If you're in the position to help us grow, head over to our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash unsignedpoppunk. Let us know in the comments below who you'd like to see on the show and what other content you'd like to see. Thanks so much.